Many of us dream about making something that is bigger than ourselves. Something that will go on to take on its life on its own. The fact that only few people are able to do it just makes it even more interesting for the rest of us to understand them and learn from them. And perhaps no software has had a greater impact on all of us than Flash. At some point, it was the most popular piece of software in the world. But today, we can only think back on it and try to learn from both their insights and mistakes. This is the rise and fall of Flash. It's interesting how some people seem to do amazing things from the moment they were born, while others first start shining later in life. I will let you decide which of the categories the heroes of our story belong to. Before making what would eventually be Flash, Charlie Jackson and Jonathan Gay developed the game Dark Castle, which was released in 1987. The game series would eventually go on to send 1 million copies and was in 1996 declared the 136th best computer game ever released by Computer Gaming World. While this was an impressive accomplishment, I guess no one would expect the developers of the 136th best game of all time to revolutionize the industry as a whole, but that is exactly what they would go on to do. Seven years after the release of Dark Castle, Jackson and Gay would go on to found Future Wave Software, along with the less known Michelle Welsh. Despite her involvement in one of the biggest successes of all time, she does not even have a Wikipedia page. But according to thehistoryofweb.com, she was responsible for running marketing in the company. They developed a product called Smart Sketch, a vector-based drawing tool, and released it in 1993. They soon realized that this product had the potential to challenge Macromedia's shockwave technology. With this goal in mind, they added several features to Smart Sketch, and we named it to Future Splash Animator. Future Splash Animator was a decent product, but what it became? That changed the internet forever. Within months, Macromedia bought the company, and just like that, Flash was ready to take over the web. From 97 to 2000, the company was busy and released Flash Player 2, 3, 4 and 5. With that came great new features such as PNG support, sprite animations, font support and audio support. But the biggest change was the release of ActionScript in Flash Player 5. With that, it was suddenly possible for developers to create anything they could imagine, including games. Unlike their competitors, Flash had amazingly small file sizes, meaning that the content would take way less time to load. This was especially important back then, because most people had slow dial-up internet connections. Macromedia made a great business decision to give away the browser plugin for free, meaning that consumers of Flash content did not have to pay anything. This increased the demand for the real moneymaker, the tool that would allow developers to create Flash content. This is the idea of commoditizing your complement, which we explored in my latest video on why OpenAI is no longer open source. You could argue that Flash symbolized the transition from something you could read to something you could interact with. Because before Flash, you couldn't really do so much on the internet. It was mostly for reading or discussing on forums. But with Flash, you could play amazing games, visit creative websites and watch videos. The most popular Flash content was games, and they were distributed on websites such as Miniclip or Y8. And if you're like me, you probably spend a lot of time on these websites, instead of doing the homework you're supposed to. The sites would share a portion of the revenue with the developers, and if you made a popular game, you could even turn it into a full-time job. For many people, these were the golden days of the internet. There were so many free games, and unlike now, it was rare to see a game that offered any in-game purchases or DLC. It was simply a game where the developer was played when you played the game through ads. This meant that games were just competing by how fun they were to the players. And the websites, such as Miniclip, served as hubs that made it possible to easily discover and try out new games. One of the reasons why this worked so well was because the games did not require you to make an account, download an app or anything like that. You could just get started immediately. Another reason why it became so popular was because JavaScript was much worse than what it is today, and the same was for CSS and HTML. Because of its success, Adobe bought Macromedia in 2005 for $3.4 billion and kept improving Flash. But as they say, Nothing good lasts forever. 
The sixth law of the internet states that every good thing will eventually come to an end. In our story, the man that gave the death sentence was ironically Steve Jobs. The reason why this was ironic was that one of the reasons he did not want iPhones, iPods or iPads to support Flash was because he believed in the open web standards, meaning HTML, CSS and JavaScript. But what he forgot to mention was that he also believed in his own closed standard, apps on the App Store. And you know, his argument makes some sense. Flash became very popular and most people did not want a company controlled software to be the standard because they would eventually get more and more control over the internet, which was meant to be open. And furthermore, Flash was also inefficient and used plenty of CPU resources, which drained the battery fast. But perhaps the biggest hurdle was the many security vulnerabilities. Adobe would not pay enough attention to the security and even the many frequent patches did not solve the issues. And since iOS products became more and more popular, more devices were no longer supporting Flash. And that became even worse when other browsers made the same decision. In 2020, Adobe would officially stop supporting Flash and was already replaced by HTML5 in most cases. The era had come to an end. The philosopher George Santayana said that those who do not learn from history is doomed to repeat it. So what can we learn from the fall of Flash? Could Adobe have prevented it? When going to business school, one of the most important things you are taught is that when you have a dominant position, you have to develop what will replace you before someone else does. Otherwise you just end up in YouTube videos where YouTubers with less than 700 subscribers philosophize about the things you did wrong. And in this case, I think Adobe was just too late. Around 2011 to 13, Adobe did push several HTML5 products out, hoping to gain a significant market share of the toolings used to create HTML5 content. But at that point, there were already many competitors and with Adobe's high prices, the products never really took off. Another reason why they never took off is because of the confusing product strategy. Instead of making Flash an easy bridge to HTML5, Adobe threw out a bunch of disjointed tools that confused developers. Instead, it would have made more sense to allow the big developer community of Flash content to simply export the file as HTML5 in the program used to create Flash content. Adobe would eventually do that, but it was way too late. It was first in 2016 that they made this feature. That would of course not have saved Flash, but Adobe would have been able to carry on the developer community to the next era. Instead, we look back at Adobe and think, how were they able to mess this up when they were doing so well? When looking back at Flash, it is difficult not to be nostalgic. It changed the internet in many ways, and most importantly, it changed us. After its downfall, the internet changed. Companies found ways to make us pay more for less. And the same companies started using psychological tricks to hook us in ways we didn't expect. And even Adobe has now started employing more money grabbing strategies, such as requiring you to pay a monthly subscription to use their software, or even requiring you to pay to cancel your subscription. The death of Flash wasn't just about security flaws or Steve Jobs, it was a part of a bigger trend of companies locking down the internet. Adobe lost because they didn't embrace openness, but look around today and we are still fighting that same battle with Apple, Google and Meta deciding what the future of the web looks like. Flash could not have saved us from all of this. In many ways, this was inevitable. But we can look back at Flash and be inspired by what was in many ways a better internet. A time where creativity and fun won over greed. And who knows, maybe we will one day return to those times that Flash symbolized. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider to subscribe, like the video and leave the comment below. That is the best way to help me reach more people like you. And I currently have around 600 subscribers and each one of you means a lot. Thanks.